iron rain Spanish hotel with its wrought iron pergolas in its inside courtyard, at how often he had failed with women in a bullfighting town, Merida, its ruined amphitheater ringed with silent oles, for the flourish of his thoughts, for the self-murder of his pitiable jealousy. Time might deliver him of his torment, time that had gnawed the stone and eaten his heart. You, my dearest friend, reader, its river running through reeds and lights on the river, where the warp of a willow coiled like an ampersand. Suppose I lived in this town, there would be a fountain, fountain, a tower with two stalks, I call them cranes, and black-haired beauties passing. Then again, I wouldn't be living in a posh hotel. All of Spain's heart is in the square, its side streets shot and bathed by the August sun. The bull, ride, the bull ring would be closed until Sunday. Heat would scorch the park benches, and there would be a lot of pigeons hopping on cobbles with their pink feet. I would sit there alone, an old poet with white thoughts, and you, my preacher, would be dead. And only half your name would be remembered, because by then you would have lost power over my sleep, sleep until all that remains is the fountain's jet, stalks on the bell tower or crane. This is for an elegy for a very fine young Italian poet, a woman who died. The day gray, the moon slate, too overcast to swim, unless a strong sun emerges, which it may. Our hands like ants keep building libraries, storing leaves and riddling parchment. Our books are tombstones, every poem a hymn. And that honey natured, gifted Italian girl, gone from the leaves of poesia, gone from the wet stones of Rimini, as the ants keep scribbling, the crabs keep scuttering, and the tombstones thicken. She was one of the lovely ones, lovely in laughter, musical in speech, so gentle in disposition, vanished like drying sand like the fast shadow of the wind on a sunlit beach. A crab halts and then continues, like this ant, this hand. The pine flung its net to snare the evening swallows back to its branches. Their flight was brief as bats. The yachts lit up and brought Syracuse close. A broken music drifted from the ferry boats at dusk, the soul rocks in its homesickness. In the orange hour, its silhouette as a palm, its spiky as a sea urchin against the sky, beginning to pulse with stars. The open psalm of a huge cloud slowly absorbed its dye. Swifts practiced their archery, and the day's fire roared over Carthage, over Alexandria. All of the cities were emblems in the sun's empire. And the night, in its blindness, would choose a girl with greater vision, Santa Lucia, patroness of palm and pine tree, whose alphabet was the swallows of Syracuse. The blue windows, the blue windows, the lemon-colored counterpane, Knowing that the sea is behind the avenue with balconies and bicycles, that the jellied traffic mixes its fumes with coffee transient interiors, transient bed sheets, and the transient view of sea salted hotels with spiky palms, in spite of which summer is serious, since there is inevitably a farewell to arms to the storm haired beauty who will disappear. The shifted absence of your axis, love wobbles on your body's pivot to the carriage's shudder as it glides past the roofs and beaches of the Ligurian coast. Things lose their balance, 
and totter from the small blows of memory. You wait for revelations, for leaping dolphins, for nightingales to loosen their knotted throats, for the bell in the tower to absolve your sins like the furled sails of the homecoming boats. visit to Leopardi's house. As your red hair moved through Leopardi's house, it was with its modest, flameless fire, Maria. We toured its rooms in awe of such suffering, whose stairs constricted its walls, whose climbing area was Sylvia and solitude under dark beams passing bound volumes in funereal fire. We heard of the great poet's crippled dreams from our Caravaggio guide and her white smile. You seemed wrong for the crowd, separate, distinct. You belonged to the spring freckled hills outside Reconati. Your poor tanned body winked under its floral print. Your look said, why must they feel that love is a great don't sparrows dart with joy around this house, though more lugubrious pilgrims come tomorrow. Then I looked from the window of his house and saw, assembled in the little square, knights ranked to serve the banner of red hair, the halberds raised on half a hundred horses. Even this far from that compact, modest hotel, white walls of summer, pink of the ice cream cart, baking bicycle path and mineral water bottle. Another beach postcard stamps itself on my heart. Even this far weeks later, the itch of sand, the Adriatic sticks to my back, plating it with brain salt, bringing irascible mothers and their rubber bright children and hating it. At first, the rented chairs, while a hundred identical iron umbrellas emphasize the size of the holiday resort and the invincible dread of families where each shadow is an oasis and vanilla colored girls rub cream on their thighs. In an advertisement, Italy, a plastic happiness that brought actual content. In the full lobby, the elderly idle. I was now one of them, studying the slow, humped tourist was my only hobby, wrapped now by a whimsical bladder and terrible plans. 